Welcome to worship on this Thanksgiving time. It's different Thanksgiving, isn't it? Some have even said, we're canceling Thanksgiving. Nonsense. This is a day of national Thanksgiving. Uh, the church celebrates harvest and Thanksgiving. It's a national holiday for a nation to give thanks to God. And so we worship. Uh, I have not heard anything in newspapers or anything saying Thanksgiving's different, but of encouraging giving thanks to our creator for all that we have as a nation. That testifies to the kind of culture in which we live. A kind of culture in which you and I as God's people, God's Christian people, believers in Jesus, have to remind ourselves we never stop giving thanks. And we do it on a special time such as this. And so we worship either this evening or tomorrow morning whenever you view our Thanksgiving service. We begin with our first hymn, Come, Ye Thankful People, Come. in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Thanksgiving Litany Prayer. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's love is everlasting. Come, let us praise God joyfully. Let us come to God with thanksgiving. For the good world, for things great and small, beautiful and awesome, for seen and unseen splendors, 
Thank you, God, for human life, for talking and moving and thinking, for hopes and hardships shared from birth until death. Thank you, God, for work to do and strength to work, for the teamwork of labor, for exchanges of humor and encouragement. Thank you, God, for children, their energy and curiosity, their brave play and their startling frankness, their sudden sympathies. Thank you, God, for the young, for their high hopes, for their irreverence toward worn out values, their search for freedom, their solemn vows. Thank you, God, for growing up and growing old, for wisdom deepened by experience, for rest in leisure, and for time made precious by its passing. Thank you, God, for your help in times of doubt and sorrow, for healing, for preserving us through temptation and danger. Thank you, God, for the church into which we have been called, for the good news we receive by word and sacrament, for our life together, even though temporarily apart in the Lord. Thank you, God for your Holy Spirit, who guides our steps and brings us gifts of faith and love, who prays in us and prompts our grateful worship. Thank you, God. Above all, O oh God, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who lived and died and lives again for our salvation, for our hope in him and for the joy in serving him. We thank and praise you, God, for all your goodness to us. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's love is everlasting. Sing to the Lord of Harvest, verse 1. for Thanksgiving is from Deuteronomy 26, starting with verse 1. When you come into the land that the Lord your God has given you for an inheritance and have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all of the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God <clears throat> that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and, and humiliated us and laid us into hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into the place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruits of the ground, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God 
and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. This is the reading. The clouds are drawn, the clouds in the desert, no man scream. The hills he put in madness, the valleys laugh and sing. God gives the earth in fullness, our wings with large increase. Second reading is from the New Testament from Philippians chapter 4 beginning with verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Now that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance, and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my troubles. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in the Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Ephroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to the riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the reading. Our gospel lesson for this time, this day of thanksgiving, this time of thanksgiving, um, is written in Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. It is the timeless and well-known uh, story of the healing of the ten lepers. It is also the basis for our sermon. 
Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of our Lord. We confess our faith and gratitude uh, in the words of, the, of Luther's definition to the first article of the Creed. Let us confess together our faith in the Lord who provides all things for our good. I believe that God has created me in all that exists that he has given me and still sustains my body and soul, all my limbs and senses, my reason and all the faculties of my mind, together with food and clothing, house, family and property, that he provides me daily and abundantly with all the necessities of life, protects me from all danger and preserves me from all evil. All this he does out of pure fatherly and divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness on my part. For all of this, I am bound to thank, praise, serve, and obey him. This is most certainly true. Amen. We join and again a well-known hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. We know it well, and a few notes about that hymn and the background to it. Pay close attention to these words as you sing them and realize the background. Written by Martin, Martin Rinkert, a Lutheran pastor in the walled city of Eilenburg, Germany. It was written during the Thirty Years' War and, <coughs> excuse me, also during the time of plague. He was the only pastor in that town during that time. He often conducted funerals for 40 to 50 people in a day, a total of 4,480 in all during that period of time. This hymn was written in, uh, 19, in 1637, and his wife also died from the plague. But he refused to be defined by his circumstances he determined to focus on the unchanging character of a merciful God. We join in that hymn of joy in a time of epidemic and panic and death. Now thank we all our God. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Our text for our sermon this evening is um, taken from that very, very familiar gospel lesson, and you've probably heard it preached on many, many times over the years um, on thanks at Thanksgiving time and maybe other times, the parable of the ten lepers and the one who returned uh, to give thanks to God. T today I would like to talk about the other side of the coin. Why didn't the other nine come back? We'll use our imagination a little bit at this time. Probably very valid reasons. In fact, as we go through them, I'm going to give you nine reasons, one for each of the nine who did not return to give thanks, um, for the reasons and probably very rational and maybe even touch us. I know they touch me sometime when I read through these and, and so forth and as I wrote this sermon. Let's take a journey with them. Number one, it's great to be normal again. I didn't expect this, though it, it is his job. That's what he gets paid for. We take for granted sometimes services rendered. We don't thank our teachers or policemen, our pilots, or our engineers, or many other people, because they're just doing their job. And that's what we expect. I knew about this Jesus, but yeah, that's what he does. He heals. I'm not good at making pretty speeches. Uh, I'm the quiet, reserved type, and I can't express myself very well. And I find it hard to give a compliment and easy to criticize. It's like the minister of the, in a church in England that was told by parishioners, if we like you, we'll say nothing. If we don't, we'll tell you. I wasn't sure he was the right one to thank. Maybe it was just a coincidence. After all, when you go to the priests, they were kind of the doctors that proclaimed you healed and hold. Maybe they did it. I don't know if it was this other person, this Jesus, who stopped and did it. And so I didn't say anything. Well, you know, the one who does the healing uh, gets a lot of satisfaction out of it. He likes doing it. Why shouldn't he, or why should he expect thanks for it? Mother likes puttering around the house, making beds, sewing, cooking, etc. Why do we so very often withhold appreciation from the very people who serve most gladly because we assume that uh, they're getting their satisfaction from it anyway? Number five, in as great a hurry as ever. You know, I'm a type A. I meant to go back but with everything going on, I, I just didn't get around to it. Have you ever seen that little symbol a friend sent me this once that said, uh, it was a little circle piece of paper, and it was called Around To It. Visiting persons in the hospital who says I've learned something. I'll be more faithful now. See, this one, number five, was quite sincere. But he lived so fast, he didn't take time for some things important. Number six, you know, I was afraid. 
If I expressed my appreciation, I might have gotten us both into trouble because I wasn't sure about this person with Jesus. And I didn't want to get him in trouble. You see, he wasn't a licensed practitioner. He wasn't a scribe or Pharisee. They didn't approve of him. And so the best idea was to keep quiet. Don't stick your neck out. I'm not ashamed to go to my Lord or to defend his cause, says an old hymn. But sometimes many of us are. If it means going counter to public opinion, recognize the supervisor from our local district who was the only one to vote against a resolution the other night in our county and has gotten all kinds of shame for it. And yet I would stand with her because she went counter to public opinion. You see, sometimes discretion is a better part of valor in days of witch hunting and <laughs> strong political feeling. Talk about tong strong political feeling. You know when these words were first written? 50 years ago, 1970. <laughs> Has the world changed? Has our thankfulness changed? I was afraid too, but I was afraid if I went back and told him it would put, put me in under, under an obligation to him. He might expect me to do something in return. Never give people the idea that you're obligated to them and then you're free to go your own way. The more involved you become with one, the more trouble you find, many will say. I would rather be independent than neither indebted or committed to anybody. Jean-Paul Sartre, French philosopher once said, hell, that's other people. This perhaps is the greatest single malady in our land today, the lack of community or of people committed and indebted to each other. And I would hope that we are feeling this in the time when we are forced by COVID-19 at times not to be together. Discretion is the better part of valor. The greatest test of your humanity, though, is when you become dependent on another person and still regard yourself a whole and happy person created by God to whom you daily give thanks. Number eight, I didn't want to be healed. Strange as it may seem to you. I didn't want to get back into the rat race. I kind of liked being isolated. What if I didn't want to take up my responsibility for living again? And now I'm forced back into it. Is that an extreme case? Many spiritual invalids prefer to be that. If they were whole, they might be called upon to fight. If they had the abundant life, they might be having or called upon to share it. How many, even of us at times, go along in contentment with mediocr mediocrity because then we don't have to take tasks and we're not, don't want to face. The word coined by a man named Cummings, undead, describes how many and how often we say we don't want to let anyone know us truly because then we'll have to show ourselves. Then, you know, I could teach you maybe to have musical ability if you had some or this talent, but then you have to use it. Number nine, you say you didn't think, no wonder. 
Think and thank come from the same root word. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, says the psalmist. We need to think about that, Lord, and when we think about it, we thank him. To think about our blessings is to make ourselves available to the now and the pres this present life. Great praisers are great livers. And so on this Thanksgiving, give thanks to the Lord. Think about it. Ask your Lord again for the thankful heart which thanks him for his great blessings, material as they were and as they are. And the greatest blessing of the joyful life which he has made available to us in Christ Jesus in any time and in any circumstance. Blessed Thanksgiving, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now may that peace of God, which truly passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus, amen. We pray and then join together in the Lord's Prayer. For food and drink, O Lord, we thank you. For clothes on our back and good shoes on our feet, we thank you. For roof overhead and shelter where needed, we thank you. For transportation and places we go, we thank you. Lord, you have given us more than enough to sustain our body in this life. Teach us how to rightly understand and use your gifts to us. Open our eyes to the needs of those around us that we may recognize their need to be in your need. Fill us with the zeal of your spirit that we may freely give in the same spirit with which we have received. Make us to see that what we waste each month is more sufficient to feed many mouths which now remain hungry because of our wastefulness of your good gifts. Teach us to conserve your good gifts that others need not hunger. Help us to understand that the stewardship of your material blessings includes the readiness and love to help those less fortunate than ourselves. By your Holy Spirit, teach us that true thankfulness expresses itself also in loving acts of helping the needy. Show us that it is not sufficient to tell a person of your love. Help us demonstrate that love as we share with those less blessed in this world's goods. Help us to share with the hungry of this world, even as we would gladly and eagerly share with you, O Lord, our Savior, in whose name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the company of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all as you give thanks. Amen. <laughs>